CPU versus GPU. In this video, we're gonna compare the render speed of both using V-Ray. For this, I brought two heavyweight champions. And let me introduce the AMD Threadripper, sporting 64 cores or 128 threads of pure CPU power, clocking in at 2.9 gigahertz. And with an initial purchasing price of $3,990, the CPU until this day is one of the best and most powerful CPUs in the desktop market. And for the GPU, we will use the NVIDIA RTX 4090, sporting 16,384 CUDA cores, equipped with 24 GB of memory. And with the current purchasing price of around $2,000, this GPU is nearly half the price compared to its CPU competitor. So now let's see which one can render faster. So using V-Ray, that is actually quite simple to do because V-Ray comes with two completely separate render engines. At the moment, we use the CPU version here of V-Ray, but there's also access to the GPU version in here. And the great thing is that you can seamlessly switch between them because by now, V-Ray GPU supports nearly all of the features that V-Ray CPU basically offers. So switching between CPU and GPU is normally just a push of a button in here because all of the shaders the lighting setup, the scene setup, and so on, all can be completely recycled. So what we have here is a simple scene that I prepared. And you can also find that on my Patreon if you want to test it out by yourself. And I just have a bunch of different shaders here prepared, some different kind of refractive materials, some kind of metallic shaders, some kind of translucent materials, and some car paint material, basically just the typical stuff that you end up working with in your day-to-day -day scenes. And I just want to test out basically if GPU or CPU can render those shaders faster. So the way we're gonna do that is not by eyeballing, we're just gonna give basically each of the render engines the same amount of time and then just compare which of the images has less noise. So let's set up here our CPU render engine first. And for this, we have to use the progressive mode in here. And let's just enable here the max subdivisions to, for example, 10,000 or whatever is the highest amount in here because we don't really want to cap here our max subdivisions. And then let's say we want to have a max render time of let's say 0.3 minutes. So that should be 18 seconds, so roughly 20 seconds basically. And we also gonna put the noise threshold here to zero. So that means that we're not gonna care about if the noise level was reached or not. We're just gonna basically fire all the power we have for 18 seconds in here, and then just gonna check how noisy the end result looks like. So now using those settings, I will render a bunch of different shaders in here and then store them in the history so we can compare them later on. So obviously I sped up the process here a little bit so that you don't have to wait through all of this. But basically we have now a bunch of different pictures and they're all rendered basically 20 seconds. Some of them, as you can see here, are actually quite noisy. And now we're gonna check how the GPU would perform the same task given the same amount of time. So we first would have to switch the render engine here to the GPU version. And then also make sure that we use the same kind of settings in here. So in the V-Ray tab, our GI engine, I will leave to brute force in here because in the CPU version, I also didn't really use the light cache. So I want to just compare the same thing here and also make the sampler type here to progressive and use a noise limit of zero and a samples limit of zero so that we just basically limiting here by the time. We will also use a 0.3 minute limit, so 18 seconds basically. And then let's go to this performance tab. And here you can see the render engine that's being used and the V-Ray GPU version here supports basically two different render engines. We have the CUDA version and we have the RTX version. And since I have here an RTX card, I will also use this engine in here because from my testing, it was a little bit faster in most kind of situation compared to the CUDA version in here. So let's also use that in here and let's make sure that we only use here our 4090 to render so that we don't really use our second graphic card here to speed up the whole process so that we can really compare the CPU versus here our 4090. 
all of the other settings we will leave at default and now i'm just gonna render the same shaders out save them to the history so we can later on compare them So now in the frame buffer, by just using the AB compare tool in here, we can compare the results. So let's use A here for the CPU rendering of this shader and B for the GPU version here. Let's zoom in and see if we can find the difference. So on the right hand side, that would be the GPU version. You can see the result is much cleaner. We have less of this kind of like big and splotchy noise and I hope that's visible in the YouTube compression in here. Let's use a different shader and see if the result is maybe more obvious. And here you can clearly see a much bigger difference. So on the right hand side again is the GPU version of the shader. And as you can see, the result is not completely 100% the same. So you can see we have these kind of like much brighter lines here in the CPU version of the shader. But also there is definitely a lot more noise, a lot more irregularities. And here on the GPU side, basically it looks already kind of clean, kind of smooth. So we have a much better rendering result in this case in here. Let's choose, for example, here this shader. And here the result is quite obvious because on the right hand side, we have the GPU version. You can see it's much cleaner compared here to the CPU version of this shader and you can have a much nicer and better render result given the same amount of time. Let's also check out those shaders in here. The result again is the same and maybe this one here should be also quite obvious where we have this translucent material and you can see that there is quite a big difference in terms of noise. So all in all basically at least for this scene in here the GPU would be the clear winner because it is able to generate a much smoother result in the same time. And second, it basically cost half the price than the CPU. So in this case, that would be a clear win in my book. So here I use the same workflow on a slightly more complicated scene. The scene is from my car rendering course that you can find on my Patreon if you're interested. And you can see that here also we have a kind of similar result where here on the right hand side we have the GPU version. And as you can see here for the tires, for example, the CPU version is much more splotchy while the GPU version looks much more smooth overall. But you can see that also there are some kind of tiny differences in the rendering output. So for here, for example, I have a little bit more bump in the CPU version, but the GPU version here is missing that bump. That's probably because some of the nodes in the shader maybe are unsupported. I'm using some procedural noise and so on. So maybe they get slightly translated differently in the GPU version. So you would need to go in and investigate where these kind of small differences here come from. But overall, you can basically get exactly the same result using either GPU or CPU. Here for the headlights, I found it's interesting is that this is the only part where I feel the CPU version actually looks a little bit smoother. So this one here would be the GPU version and this one here the CPU version. And for me, somehow the CPU version looks a little bit smoother in this kind of result. But if you check other parts like the floor here, for example, this is much smoother on the GPU version again. So at least in those examples that we tested in here, the GPU seemed to perform better than our CPU, but that doesn't always have to be the case. In these kind of rather simplistic scenes, which are not fairly complicated, the GPU oftentimes has an advantage because it performs much easier in these kind of situations, while the CPU has an advantage in much more complicated scenes where we use huge amount of data as very complex shaders and so on. So your results may vary also depending on the scenes that you try it on. And that's something very important to keep in mind that it's not like a clear cut that the GPU will always perform better than the CPU, but you have to test that out in your specific circumstances.
So that concludes our tutorial. If you like that, you can also check out my Patreon, where I'm sure you can find lots of additional interesting goodies for you and also a whole course on car rendering, as you can see here in this example image. And otherwise, see you in the next tutorial. Take care and see you soon.